What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new show we call Next Gen Console Watch 2020. This is where we'll be following all the news, rumors, and leaks that pop up week to week all year long, leading up to the release of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by the host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond, Jonathan Dornbush. Beyond. And the host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked, Ryan McCaffrey. I am so stoked for this year. This is a great new show. I'm, we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's yeah. a next gen year. Very exciting times. Let's jump right into our first story of the week. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has reiterated his belief that frame rate is more important than resolution. Uh, and what's the significance of this? Because 8K resolution is a big next-gen buzzword, yeah. but Phil is like, ah, it's not quite as important as frame rate. Yeah, I mean, I think what he's probably hinting at, well, number one, uh, Xbox has a, has a history of this. Mm -hmm. The original Xbox technically could output at 720p back in the pre-HD era, and there were a couple of games that could do it, uh, frame rate usually wasn't too good back on that OG <laughs> Xbox, but it could be done, but it's always been in service of the best player experience. Uh, I mean, we've seen over time, look at like Halo was a was the, one of the biggest games in all of gaming, not just the Xbox, and it was a 30 frames per second game until Call of Duty really came in, uh, and once, once Call of Duty 2 launched on the 360, and then Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, you know, 60 frames became the expected normal standard for everything. And so uh, even though the, the Project Scarlet, AKA the Series X is capable of 8K, apparently, right according to the, the stamp right on its, its uh, chip there, uh, I think we're gonna, gonna see more of 4K, but with higher frame rates. I mean, look at, you know, Halo Infinite, for all we know, could have a, a, a you know, 120 <laughs> for frame per second mode in it. It's possible. We don't know. Yeah. But you know, 4K 60, or maybe you know, dial it up a little, a little higher if you've got uh, the right hardware for it. So, I, I think he's right. It's it's always going to be a, a better gameplay experience if it's got a uh, you know smoother controls and and less input lag and just a. A nice, easy experience. Well, the IGN readers overwhelmingly agreed with Phil Spencer, I believe. Yes. You know, we polled people in the article, I believe. Over 80% of them agreed that frame rate is more important than resolution. Uh, but Jonathan, you kind of fall on the other side. Yes, as I'm known for being the contrarian, of right, course. Exactly. Uh, no, for me, obviously it depends, I think, on the game you're playing. If I'm playing a game that's competitive or especially more performance-based, I'm probably going to prefer having a locked great frame rate. Mm. But for me, especially as a frequent player on the PS4 Pro, a lot of games often come with the choice of, can I uh, choose the performance mode or mm. the resolution mode? And that sort of gives you whether it's gonna really look beautiful, but maybe be slightly choppier or run at a locked frame rate, but maybe not be at as high resolution. For me, I always, choose the mode that is the resolution over mm. performance because I tend to be playing more single player narrative based games and I want that world to really feel alive. I want something like a God of War or Horizon to be as beautiful as it can be even if that means maybe a couple frames are dropping here and there. Mm. That said, if I'm playing a first person shooter or a third person shooter, especially competitively, that resolution or that frame rate needs to be locked in for me. Well, it'll be interesting to see if those options carry on to the next-gen consoles. Let's move on to our second story this week. Some uh, leaked images uh, allegedly show the Xbox Series X out there in the wild. Uh, I think we're going to bring up these images here on the screen. But Ryan, first of all, what's your read on, on how legitimate oh, these images oh, are? Oh, they're legit. Someone's yeah. in real big trouble. Uh, so whoever, the, the person that posted the pictures, I don't know if they're the same person that has possession of the console or if they mm -hmm. took it, you know, took shots at a friend's house, maybe a friend's a developer or something. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, the, the pictures posted, as you see there from Doug, are, uh, <laughs> they, show, they show a serial number, yeah. which uh, astute Xbox fans have actually gone so far as to register that console on xbox.com. It's, it's a real console ID. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, the person that that belongs to probably got called into a meeting. So why is this, why are there yeah. pictures of this on the internet? But yeah, it's it's definitely real. It's a it's a work in progress prototype. You can see on the back, it's the expected uh, number of ports, uh, expected ports just in general, except for there's one mystery flat long uh, horizontal port, which is almost certainly for a diagnostic port right. for some, you know, yeah. for an engineer or somebody to plug in a laptop with a proprietary Microsoft cable to to be able to do, you know, various tweaks and testing and get some, you know, different data, maybe, you know, 
thermal data from sure. inside it, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's the, it, that's it. That's the that's the console. So Jonathan, where where are the leaked images of the PlayStation Five? Well, we've gotten dev kit leaks. Dev kit leaks uh, sure. so far. So I have a feeling, uh, you from know, the cleaner from at the cleaner at Ubisoft. Yeah, one of my favorite. That was an amazing Facebook post. Hey, I was cleaning up the office. Don't post these anywhere <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, no, I mean honestly, I don't know how much actual, at least planned, PS5 consoles are out there in the wild. We have heard Phil Spencer's been pretty open about, I've been bringing a Series X home and playing with it at home, and it's become my you know primary console. We don't really hear Jim Ryan or Shuhei Yoshida saying, I have my PS5 at home, bring it with me to and from work every day. So honestly, I don't know if there are you know, near market versions of the PS5 in the works that they have. I don't know how wide those are going currently. Yeah. So that, that's probably why we haven't seen leaks yeah. of that. What the PlayStation 5 looks like is still a big uh, mystery to us. That's yes. one of the big question marks we'll be chasing this year. Uh, let's move on to the next story. The uh, GDC Game Developers Conference surveys game developers every year. They've released the latest results. One of the questions they asked developers was, are you working on a next gen game? And 18% of the however many thousand uh, game developers that took the survey 18% said they were working on next-gen games. So I guess another way to put it is uh, the vast majority of developers are not <laughs> yeah. working on a next-gen game. Ryan, does 18%, does that number seem high or low to you? It seems real low. Okay. Like it's, uh, I mean, I know there's still, the thing is we have to remind ourselves as as hardcore gamers who want to be on the, on the cutting edge of everything and want to buy the PS5 and the Series X on day one, that mm -hmm. the majority of, of console sales happen way later in the in the console cycle after price drops and you know look at how how well the the Xbox and the PS4 have continued to sell in the last you know the back half of mm -hmm. this console generation so um, yeah I guess it, it shouldn't surprise me but it's still it still does surprise me because games are so big, so involved, so expensive to make they require so much time and, and so many resources that I would think that just even if there weren't these weren't all for launch games that, you know, they're games that might be two, three years out that still more developers would be working on stuff. Yeah. The, the number doesn't completely shock me. It's definitely a little lower than maybe I would hope. Mm -hmm. But if, if you think about what GDC tries to do, especially with this uh, survey that they do, they try to take as wide a swath of the industry as possible. And we do know that a lot of independent developers are involved with GDC, both uh, giving talks and just in the planning and everything of that nature. So my guess is, you know, obviously I don't know the numbers of who was pulled in this grouping, but I could see them very much trying to get a lot of independent developers involved who maybe don't have access to dev kits yet, mm -hmm. whereas they're maybe not pulling 3,000 Ubisoft employees who may be working on a next-gen game. That's but true. That That's number doesn't right. shock me completely. That's a good point. I think yeah. Ubisoft is a good candidate for uh, to be having developers that are working on these next-gen games. Bethesda might also be a good candidate. We know they're. Oh well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Starfield's already yeah. confirmed, and, and Elder Scrolls Six, which they probably haven't even started on, yeah. but yeah, Starfield for sure. On the Ubisoft side, they said the games they delayed out of 2019 right. were delayed to also work on next gen versions. Yes, Watch Dogs, right. Legion. Yeah, yeah, Gods and Monsters exactly. and Rainbow Six Rainbow Quarantine. Quarantine. Yeah. yeah, we also have a breakdown on uh, which developers or which platform developers are working on. Eleven percent of devs surveyed said they're like working on a PlayStation Five game, and nine percent for Xbox. So that's, that's, there's some parity there, reasonably. Yeah, yeah. And, some and overlap, of course. There could, as Jonathan alluded to a moment ago, there could easily be some uh, just sample size weirdness there, where it, that that's might not be representative. It might be closer to you know ten to ten or or eleven to eleven. You yeah, know, though, though we can say something like say if the developers behind Godfall were pulled in here, we know they're right. working on a PS5 game sure. and not an Xbox Series X game. So yeah, that's probably where those discrepancies come from. Sure. Okay. Well, moving on. This week on IGN, we reviewed a new PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 peripheral. It's the back button attachment. We found it pretty useful, especially for competitive gamers. We gave it a 7. I'm now going to throw you to IGN's tech editor, Bo, who has some speculation on what this means for the PlayStation 5's controller, the DualShock 5. Thanks, Damon. So when you hear the words backwards compatibility, you usually think of games. But it matters for hardware, too. This week, Sony released the DualShock 4 back button attachment a weird little gadget that plugs into your DualShock 4 controller and adds, you guessed it, back buttons. Just like the kind that you find on high-end controllers like the Xbox Elite controller and those from some third-party companies like Scuf and Astro. Now you might think that this is just to give the first-party DualShock some similar functionality, and it does do that, but it might also point towards Sony's plans for the PS5, specifically the PS5 controller, which we can pretty safely guess will be called the DualShock 5. Now this is pure speculation, 
but I wouldn't be surprised to see back buttons included by default on the DualShock 5. If that's the case, then the back button attachment is a really smart play from Sony. If the DualShock 5 has back button attachments by default, it's possible then that they'll actually be a requirement for PS5 exclusives. The back button attachment would then allow gamers to bring their existing controllers with them into the next generation, something that we've really only seen happen with the immortal GameCube controller and then Wiimotes on the Wii U. But that's exactly what Microsoft has said will be the case with current gen Xbox controllers and the Series X. In other words, hardware backward compatibility. It would fall in line also with what we know between the difference between Microsoft and Sony's approach to backwards compatibility. As far as we know, Sony is planning PS5 exclusives that will require the next-gen console, whereas Microsoft has said that everything on the Xbox Series X, at least for the first year or two, will still be playable on current-gen Xbox hardware. It just won't look and play quite as good. Thanks, Bo. Now, Bo also recently went in depth with backwards compatibility and how it's going to be the new standard for next gen consoles. Check out that video. We'll post the link in the comments. And that brings us to the final topic for this episode, which is Will backwards compatibility affect when you buy next gen? And I think the, the sort of jumping off point for this is the recent Cyberpunk 2077 delay from April to September 17th, really bumping right up against the, the launch of these next gen consoles. Uh, Cyberpunk has not been officially announced for next gen. However, if uh, next gen consoles are backwards compatible, what, if any, sort of advantage will there be to playing them on next gen, right? I think that remains to be seen. I mean, uh, Microsoft's been so d deliberate about about really blurring that line and making this transition as easy as possible for gamers that I wouldn't be surprised at all if there ends up being some sort of way that that uh, current gen cyberpunk does get some sort of Series X enhancement at sort of a hardware level. I mean, the, the Xbox One X does this by automatically to a degree on games now. So uh, it wouldn't at all surprise me if maybe, you know, just maybe a resolution, or pardon me, a, maybe a resolution bump, but uh, more likely maybe a frame rate boost. Uh, so I, I do wonder if, uh, if there's something to this because to your point, Damon, that CD Projekt Red has adamantly said like, nope, we're not doing any sort of next gen version mm -hmm. for the launches of, of these consoles. So uh, that leads me to wonder if, if the console makers themselves have, uh, have some tricks up their sleeve that might allow, uh, allow this game to, to look and run even better if you do decide to upgrade your machine this fall. Well, it's really interesting because as we know right now, both console makers are taking very different approaches. As uh, Bo alluded to, the Xbox uh, way of giving you next-gen games will also be, hey, you can play this game on your Xbox One X and your current-gen Xbox hardware, as well as probably PC when it comes to games that uh, are their PC Anywhere program, uh, Play Anywhere program, excuse me. Whereas with PlayStation, we don't know if they're going to sort of deliver a PS5 update patch for some of their games, especially first party games like The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima, or if they're gonna find ways for you to rebuy those games on next gen. We don't know, and they haven't said your, they've said the PS5 will be backward compatible, but they haven't said these games will receive some sort of bump. So we don't really know how that's gonna go about, and seeing what they did with the PS3 to the PS4 at the very least, they released The Last of Us Remastered on PS4, and that sold amazingly for them, even though so many people who, you know, jumped from PS3 to PS4 probably had played The Last of Us. Of course, yeah. there was a huge architectural difference yes. between the PS3 and the cell processor and the x86 architecture of the PS4 that uh, will not be the case this time. They, they won't have that as, a, as an easy built-in excuse at for the sure. very least. Yeah. Uh, well, if less than 20% of developers out there are uh, currently working on next-gen games, they're really going to need to list out some reasons why people need to upgrade, and they're going to need to start talking about what benefits you're going to be yes. able to get if, from playing your current-gen games on your next-gen console. But everyone out there watching at home, we want to know, how about you? Will you play Cyberpunk 2077 on current or next-gen consoles? Uh, you can vote in the poll. It's live on IGN.com right now, and we'll share the results with you next week. I think that's about it for our first episode of Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll be seeing you guys every Friday, all year long, running down all the latest news, reveals, and rumors until the arrival of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Ryan. My name is Damon. We'll see you guys next time here on Next Gen Console Watch 2020. Thank you.